This is Manuel Sanchez listening to Fired Up Network. Hey everybody, this is Giancarlo Alino reporting for Fired Up Network with another edition of the MMA Ground and Pound Show. And I'm happy to be joined by my guest today. He's going to be competing at Bellator 263 at the Forum in Los Angeles. He is uh, the number two ranked featherweight in Bellator. He's Emmanuel, the Matador Sanchez. How are you doing, Emmanuel? Doing good. I'm just here with the squad. Can I get an autograph? Can I get an autograph from Manuel Sanchez? Another top batting weight, Rafael Stotts, our teammate, Chris Rebright, our teammates, and Christian Rodriguez just signed a guy contender series. So life is good here on my end, man, as you can see. Peace and love in Akuna Matata always. And just enjoying this Milwaukee summer that we got, man. We're at 90 degrees and training our asses off and just getting ready to go out and be victorious. Yeah, got a great cameo there. Some great uh, up and coming fighters, uh, great top ranked band and weight, like you said there. So, uh, first things first, like Emmanuel, you're going to be co main eventing this card at Bellator 263 at the Forum. Uh, I'm sure everyone, although it was great to compete at the Fight Sphere at uh, Mohican Sun Casino, uh, this is a little bit more normal, returning to normalcy. How are you feeling going into this fight? Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we're going back with fans now. Uh, I- as far as I know, uh, open arena, so I don't know if it's limited, but it, it'll be nice. I've, I've uh, fought at the forum before, gotten to witness fights there at the forum before too, and uh, it is great, man. I love the forum. And what has been the biggest difference in your camp going into this fight? Because obviously, like now, COVID restrictions and everything going into your last two fights there, uh, has it felt a little bit more different in your preparation for this fight? <laughs> fighting in California now, and, which I like because we get two hours now ahead, so we're two hours ahead and everybody else acclimates to that time. And now, yeah, man, I love fighting in Cali. You know, I started the Grand Prix in Cali, fighting in, uh, up on the north side in San Jose, and now going back to Los Angeles to fight. It's it's uh, incredible. You know, now it's somewhat normalcy. Things are coming back, too. And uh, I know that everyone's taking the right precautions and doing the protocols and what they needed to do and just ready to go out and do what I love. And your opponent there, Mads Burnell, uh, he's competed on the past few events uh, on the prelim. Now he's getting this big opportunity to fight you on the co-main event. Uh, what are you seeing out of him and uh, what's your scouting report on him heading into this fight? He's a great fighter, brings a lot to the table, UFC vet. Uh he just finished uh, a Grand Prix competitor in Salt Rogers who Daniel Vigil didn't finish, you know? So, uh, uh, it, granted it's all in styles. And again, you know, that was a COVID kind of fight, but yeah. so, I mean, things could have been different and the mindset preparation for Saul. I mean, I know it was harder for all those, uh, European fighters because, uh, Obviously, it's all the travel restrictions and everything that they needed to have. And on top of that, every country on top of that, too, is just different in how they were running it with uh, uh, their uh, how things were open or not open, mask, no mask, etc. I don't know how things were running in other parts of the world, but um, we just got to make the best of it and do the best we can to go out and do our job, right, and go out and be victorious. But um, I see a great fighter ahead of me. I, uh, I don't think about, you know... Uh, how, how people think mismatch or uh, what a step up, step down, whatever, you know, I, I just see a great fighter before me and I just know that I want to go out and get the job done and make a statement. So I know I'm right there to uh, obviously fight for the title. Like I just did, but you know, like continue to keep the climb up, but I see these other guys that are on that list. I want to take them out just as bad as I'm sure they want to take me out. So I, I want to prove that I'm the best on that list. So he's just another guy that I got to go and prove that I'm a better fighter than. That's all. Yeah. Uh, with Manuel Sanchez here on the MMA Ground and Pound Show on the Fired Up Network. Uh, and Emmanuel, uh, just like you mentioned there, uh, scouting your opponent there, UFC vet. Uh, who are you bringing in to uh, help you train for this fight? Are you uh, mostly looking towards uh, different areas of your game that you want to target most in this? Um, yeah, I got all my teammates, you know, I just mentioned and gave their cameos and shout outs and, uh, we got a squad, man, you know, it, uh, it takes a village to raise a fighter. And I'm glad that, you know, we have a whole solid team here at Rufus Sport and each and every single, you know, fighter 
and student in martial arts that we have just from the regular kickboxing classes, even to the young amateurs coming up and younger blue purple belts in jujitsu, everyone, you know, I keep the white belt mentality. Like St. Pierre said, I can learn anything from anyone at any time. And I, uh, that's what I needed to do. Just learn, grow and evolve. And it was a painful lesson for what I just went through. But again, I take everything as a, uh, as a positive. Those experiences is only going to make me that much more better of a fighter and more dangerous. So you're going to see a very dangerous uh, Matador Sanchez next Saturday. And uh, I'm going out for that uh, first, second round TKO. And do you see this fight as a risk more than reward in this aspect because you are the second ranked opponent in the featherweight division and you're going up against the number eight rank. Like when you heard about this, who they were going to match you up with, did you, were you, I guess, upbeat about it? Like what were your initial thoughts about taking a fight against somebody ranked at number eight? Um, I knew I wanted anyone on that list. That's all that I wanted. I mean, it could have been one could think preferably five and up, but you know, where else am I going to go? What else am I going to do? So I just, you know, and I don't pick my opponents. Uh, that's who they gave me. And I'm, it always excites me. Any name that I always get, it, it excites me. And I'm, I'm watching all these guys. So whether they were on that list or not, you know, new on that list or moving up on the list, etc. you know, since these rankings came out now, I, uh, I, I just knew that I could lock horns with any of these guys at any given time. You know, with uh, seeing that the, the, we're coming to the conclusion of the Grand Prix, um, and now that I'm out of it, uh, yeah, I just want to beat everybody on that list. Honestly, everyone, that, every number that you see, I don't care really like where I'm at. I just want to go out and be victorious, and you know, everyone on that list, and I want to be at the top. So, I mean, even if I was number one, it wouldn't really make a difference. I don't get paid more or I get less. You know, I, I, it's a great thing to have that, but you know the to the victor go the spoils and that's to being at the top of the list and having the C next to your name. So I don't want a number. I want the C. Uh, yeah. And just as you mentioned that too, I want to get your thoughts on this because next month they already announced uh, Bellator that Adam Borks and uh, JJ Wilson are going to be competing. And they said the winner of that fight is going to be, it's a title eliminator and they'll fight the winner of the Grand Prix. So knowing what you do, your co-main eventing with the Grand Prix final do you feel slighted in a way or uh, do you see that as an opportunity in case maybe Pitbull or uh, AJ McKee vacate that you could end up fighting for that spot too, for the title? Absolutely. Because yeah, no one knows what's going to happen between those two. Not only just the outcome of the fight, forget about that, but what their plans are. You know, if one wins, he's undefeated. He wants to move up. He's done. He says he cleaned out the division. The other one wins. He's obviously the longest reigning champion, et cetera, cleaned out the division. Uh, I mean, there's so many other things and variables that they could say and go off the rails that what they want to do in their plans. And peace be with them. God bless them. They, they do their thing, whatever their choice be. But um, uh, I, that's an intriguing matchup. And yeah, that's, uh, that's a great matchup that I'll have my eyes on. And you never know. Someone could get injured and I could step in to fight either one of them. Um, so like, as you have mentioned, yeah, I would love to have that opportunity to fight either one of them or obviously speaking of this grand prix, whoever loses, uh, I'd like to take whoever loses out of that one too. So I think that'd be a great matchup as well too. And either way, whoever wins, it, it does, it favors me. So, I mean, even if whoever's not victorious doesn't want to fight at 45 anymore or has other plans or whatever, well, then that's fine. I mean, there's plenty of other guys on the list too, that I got to beat. To, to get that spot that I want. And also, like, uh, a lot of guys have been moving up and down in weight, uh, maybe experimenting, uh, especially with the pandemic, seeing how their body do a test weight cut. Has ever, like, there the thought of crossed your mind, like, maybe moving up or down? Like, do you ever think about that opportunity maybe later in your career? Definitely not down. <laughs> but, yes, um, I'm getting older, man. I'm going to be 31 in a few weeks. And, uh it was definitely easier when I was younger and, you know, making 45. I've only been doing it uh, about close to seven years now, actually, since I started my Bellator tenure. I, I uh, originally started as a lightweight. All my amateur fights, I had 10 of them. And my first uh, seven pro fights were at lightweight. And uh, I had no problem, you know, doing that. And I thought that was, you know, more so my division. And I, I didn't go down because of size. It just went down because at the time, uh, 
being at a, such, you know, a world-class gym and me also wanting to be, you know, at the world-class level too. I had so many teammates that were at lightweight. And even then I saw like, they were older than me, but they still, they outsized me, you know, Eric Koch, Anthony Pettis, uh, Rick Glenn, a lot of other guys that, you know, whether they're on their team, on our team now, or we're on our team previously, but we just had a lot of lightweights and I'm just like, well, and I'm pretty small right now. I, I was, I was working a third shift job and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking around 160 pounds. I'm like, that's not really normal for me. Normally that's, you know, a fight week for me fighting at lightweight and just needing to lose that weight. So I'm like, let me see if I can do it. And sure enough, I did. And so since 2014, I've been fighting at uh, 145, but now seeing I, obviously I'm filling out more. I'm coming into my prime still. I, I, I thought I've hit it a couple times actually, where I thought my best was at, you know, 26, then a, a later 28. And now I'm feeling, you know, I just, I'm getting stronger. That's how I feel. And now with, um, uh, not that it's, it's, it sucks, but it's just, it's work. And I know it'd be so much easier being, uh, like not needing to cut weight. Let's, let's just be real. Like at one championship, by the way, I have it not needing yeah. to deplete yourself in any way, shape or form, staying completely fully fed and hydrated. And I am now, but I still have obviously, you know, a little more of a process to go in order to make my contracted weight limit. But if I was fighting at lightweight, no, oh, damn, you know, you'd be seeing me eating a burrito right now or something like that, or some steak and potatoes or something, you know, as opposed to salads. So Connor, I guess said it best. Uh, instead of salads, you know, steaks. So uh, <laughs> I'd definitely be having more steaks and potatoes and than uh, just salad and, you know, egg whites. There, I'll just sit like that. You know, that's great. And, uh, you know, coming up on that, you're bringing up like seven years that uh, you've been doing the weight cut. You're coming up on uh, November. You'll be competing uh, 10 years now since your pro debut. So uh, if you were to see the young Emmanuel Sanchez that first made his debut, uh, now this experienced Emmanuel Sanchez, what advice would you give to that young fighter? Uh, same that I would still say to any of the younger fighters that I train with now. And to, to myself, even at this age, just, just never quit. Just never give up. Uh, I've obviously had uh, I've come up short in bouts that I knew I could have been victorious in or just didn't go my way. And as painful as it's been or anything, you know, along the road, bumps along the road, the journey is just enjoy and trust the process. And that's something that I've put a little more emphasis on too uh going on leading into this fight and um just my overall uh i'd say just martial arts journey is that uh you know even before i got my black belt a lot of the time I was putting just like oh i just want to be a black belt and get my black belt and you know uh being in a top featherweight i just want to be world champion i just want that belt that belt They're just they don't put uh, so much emphasis on the end result just you know enjoy the process that's all I can do. Just continue grinding, never quit, never give up, trust and enjoy the process. And, and all that will come. It will come. That's great advice. And there, um, Emmanuel, uh, before we wrap up here and let you go, uh, how can our listeners and viewers follow you on social media? Just find me at Matador Sanchez. That's my Instagram. Uh, at Matador Sanchez underscore for Twitter and Facebook. Emmanuel El Matador Sam. That's great. I uh, highly recommend that follow. Uh, Emmanuel, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time and coming on here on the MMA Ground and Pound show, and I wish you all the best.